We're going to share uh, today what we know, um, but it is work in progress. So I have no financial disclosures and no conflicts of interest to disclose um, um, in um, the role. I, I wanted to give a little bit of historical context because we will hear today what's happening now and we will discuss what has uh, happened in the last few years. Um, however, it's important to realize that recognition of Airless Danlos as a uh, entity characterized by skin um, extensibility, friability, and propensity to hematomas, as well as scarring um, associated with flexibility, was described uh, by Hippocrates in 400 BC um, in one of the documentations. So it is uh, a set of clinical characteristics that have been recognized for many, many years. It wasn't until uh, the description of these two original uh, individuals, and this is something that happened in medicine uh, uh, for a long time that we're trying to move away from, but in genetics, there's a lot of uh, name given by the person that first described a syndrome, so I thought that I would tell you who these are. Uh, Edward Erlis is a Danish dermatologist, and uh, Henri Alexandre Danlos is a French dermatologist, and it wasn't until 1936 that yet another person referred to documentation uh, of their papers describing patients with these characteristics that the term came to be known as the Ehrlich Danlos syndrome. I know that there are some people that don't like the word syndrome. In genetics, we do understand syndrome as a constellation of findings that we find together more often that they would be separate and that we presume to have one single um, cause. So there are other syndromes in genetics that have been very clearly, that clearly fit into that description. Um, if we talk about Down syndrome, that set of characteristics is always caused by an alteration in chromosome 21. As you will see through the talks today, that has not pan out to be the case for Ehrlich Danlos syndrome. And so when you hear the words heterogeneity, what we're going to be referring to is the fact that we actually have many different causes for many set, different sets of characteristics that all together do fit within this uh, umbrella of Ehrlich Danlos, but that may be placed into subcategories. And that's where the classifications come from. The first efforts to classify it uh, started in the 1960s, and that was Dr. Baton and Dr. Makuzik. Uh, we are all very familiar with the Baton score uh, for hypermobility that we will probably hear about multiple times today. And Dr. Makuzik was uh, instrumental in classifying genetic disorders according to their me uh, mechanism of inheritance. And actually, geneticists referred a lot nowadays to an online version of his classification of disorders, which is uh, what we uh, commonly refer to as OMIM, Online Mendelian Inheritance in Man. And so that's a resource that we look for um, uh, in um, looking at uh, genetic etiologies. In 1988, there was the first nosology of connective tissue um, disorders, and there were subcategories proposed, and it was revised in 1998, and most recently, in 2016, uh, published actually in 2017. So I have here uh, the screenshot of the publication. Hannah is going to address a lot more of this uh, when she talks about the classification and the, the natural history but, um, and the research that's been ongoing. But it's important to understand that this revisit of the classification was an effort driven greatly by patient organizations um, and by the EDS UK, the EDNF, the ILC participated actively and funded a meeting in which uh, the world experts about EDS um, and people that were familiar as well as patients participated, got together and reviewed all the evidence in preparation for the meeting and came up with the classification. Um, today in the program, we're going to take you through many aspects of uh, Ehrlich Danlos. There are so many that in the discussions when we were planning the meeting, it is clear that we can't cover everything every time. So the idea is that this um, uh, conference will focus on the latest advancements in some areas each year, and that progressively, as things evolve and we get more information in a particular area, we will include them. 
Today we have some genetics, we have uh, information about autonomic dysfunction, chronic fatigue, mast cell disorders, which is a big area of uh, <laughs> um, neurosurgery, TMJ, and as l the list that you see here. We have world-known presenters, both local and international, and we thank them very much for their presence. They are listed in your program, but uh, I, I really think that is, it's an excellent program that has been developed um, uh, with really the, a huge effort by the ILC in uh, putting it together um, um, and, and inviting this great roster of people. There are challenges in ADS. It's as I said, heterogeneous, the molecular basis is only known for a few of the types. There are many patients that are therefore unable to have confirmatory testing and we have to rely on clinical testing. It's a debilitating condition in some cases, in many cases, and therapies are not always effective. There's decreased awareness by physicians because this big umbrella of airless downloads, most people just know the big umbrella, but they don't know that there are subtypes and there's a need for further research linked to the causes. Um, and also, thanks to the advocacy of patient organizations like the ILC um, and uh, the government of uh, Ontario uh, funded a, the beginning of an airless dynamos program that has been running for now a year. Uh, uh, it's basically a, a year anniversary since we started our first clinics. Here you see the vision and the mission, um, as well as the referring guidelines. I want to stress that although members of the team are here, and, and, and you see um, um, over there, if you want to raise your hand if you're involved with the clinic, so, and, uh, and Hannah. We are happy to answer your questions, but I do not want this conference to become the focus of discussing the clinic. We will make sure to create forums so that you can discuss concerns about the clinic or questions about the clinic in another moment, but I do not want necessarily that to be um, the, the focus uh, of today's meeting. I did want to tell you that we have accomplished two great uh, interdisciplinary teams uh, that work together. There's one on the adult side and one on the um, pediatric side. We have uh, contacts and uh, collaborations established, but still being um, worked on, on with the pain clinic, gastroenterology, allergy and immunology, neurosurgery, and cardiology. And we have seen a large number of patients. This data is just for the first quarter of this year, which was the one that I had available yesterday for to present to you, but from between April and June, um, as you can see, the numbers uh, in adult referrals are quite large. 185 referrals were received and 182 of those were accepted for, to be seen because they met referral criteria and 105 were seen. And so although we have a good team, the team doesn't have the capacity to see the large volumes that we currently have. And that might explain why some patients may take longer to be seen. In the first quarter, the average wait time was 66 days, and the number of out referrals was uh, 78, meaning that they were referred to other services. On the pediatric side, the, the numbers are a little lower, reflecting the fact that we do it less frequently, but it's also that we don't have as many patients referred. The patient characteristics are also different between both clinics. We have half time's up, so um, I'm going to move on basically to stress that the EDS program is work in progress, that today's meeting is a great forum for us to learn, discuss, and share our experiences. The objectives are in the manual, so I'm, uh, in the program, so I'm not gonna go but one by one, but I thank you, thank the ILC for organizing this event, and welcome you all. I hope you enjoy, learn, and spread the word, which is one of the most important things. Thank you. Thank you.